Hello, thank you for joining our webinar today. We'll get started here in a few minutes, but as we wait, send us over a note in the chat feature and tell us where you're from and what you miss the most while you're stuck at home. Uh, San Diego, California, misses female colleagues and girlfriends. Me too. We've been trying to have some happy hours and some, some virtual trivia events just so we can see each other more often. Missing sailing. Harwich, Massachusetts, Cape Cod, seeing people in person in our cafeteria. Absolutely. I can tell you Garland, Texas, I'm missing some Tex-Mex right about now. Fortunately, we have some restaurants that we can get some delivery, but Tex-Mex, you just can't beat having that experience in person. San Antonio, Texas, miss seeing my coworkers. All of you folks that are missing seeing people, what are you doing virtually so that you can see people more frequently? Virtual scavenger hunts. Oh my gosh, that sounds like a blast. Free every Saturday. Wow, I'm going to have to look into that. Is there a specific app or a specific site that we're using? Compass Outdoor Adventures. Looking into that right now. I've got an enormous family, and I feel certain that we would all have a great time with that. Zoom meetings. Yeah, I think we're all getting pretty well versed in Zoom, especially all the cool background features that you can have there. Yahtzee via Zoom. Well, if anybody's going to be calling Compass Outdoor Adventures, tell them that Sam Bryant sent you. He says it's hilarious. Tallahassee, Florida, missing friends and playing soccer. All right, we'll give it just one more minute here. Another recommendation for getting involved with folks, learn about Kahoot. Kahoot is actually what we used for our internal uh, trivia game, and it was a great time. We are now got rid of our, our virtual movie night, and now we're having virtual trivia games every week. Fantastic time. Great recommendation. All right. Well, let's go ahead and get started. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar, Shaping History, the Impact of Women in Cybersecurity. I'm Nancy Free, Chief Compliance and Data Privacy Officer here at Armor and the host for today's broadcast. Before we get started, I'd like to cover a few webinar housekeeping tips. All attendees are currently on mute and will remain so throughout the duration of our webinar. Please use the chat window to inform us of any audio or technical issues. If there are any initial sound issues, we do recommend calling in via phone instead of using the audio through your computer. 
We have several panelists on our call today, and rather than having each person restate their name when speaking, please know that you can find the name of the active speaker in the top left corner of your screen. At the end of the presentation, we will take some of your questions. Please use the question feature to ask about any of the topics being discussed. Today's webinar is being recorded and a link to an edited version will be sent to all attendees post-event. With us today, we have technologists Marivi Stuchinsky, Lisa Macklin, and Gina Rocha from Rackspace, and Armour's own Marie Garcia. Can everyone take a moment and introduce themselves to our audience and share a little bit about your roles? Sure, I'll start. Hello, everyone. I'm Marivi Stuchinsky. I'm the global CTO of Technology. Um, my background, 30 years in IT, um, held positions as a former CTO at Farmers Insurance and uh, infrastructure, TV infrastructure position at Sony Pictures and Molina Healthcare, and also joined Deloitte Consulting as a tech strategy leader. Thank you, Marivi. Hi, I can go next. My name is Lisa Macklin. I'm our Global Vice President of Alliances and Channel Chief here at Rackspace. I've been with the company for 17 years and I'm excited to um, talk about this amazing topic this morning with everyone here on the panel and I'm happy to be here. Thank you, Lisa. Good morning, team. My name is, my name is Gina Rocha. I I do work at Rackspace. I'm an eight year plus racker. Uh, I have 26 plus years of compliance and audit experience in variety of fields from banking and finance to oil and gas and IT and software. Um, welcome, welcome to, this, to the webinar. Hello, my name is Marie Garcia. I'm the Director of Governance, Risk and Compliance here at Armour. And I come with 25 plus years of IT experience working with companies across industries, helping them implement their security programs, and then evaluating their compliance with their security programs. Glad to be here, glad to have everyone on the call as well. Fantastic. Well, today's topic is Shaping History, the Impact of Women in Cybersecurity. In this webinar, we'll talk about influential women in cybersecurity, being a woman in a male-dominated field, and inspiring the next generation. So let's jump right in. Influential women in cybersecurity. When I look at the names, of course, across the slide, across the next slide, there are many inspirational women here that are represented, some of whose accomplishments are more well known than others. I'll admit that there's several that we showcased here that I have not heard of before, which is a little distressing to me as a woman and as a technologist. Uh, learning more about Elizabeth Friedman, for example, and her abilities around code breaking would have rallied me in such a big way as a child. And, I was already enthralled by secret codes and how to make them, how to solve them. If I'd have learned early on that I could turn that passion into a profession, I think it would have really set a fire in me. As it was, I kind of landed in this field more by accident than anything. Marie, I know you had a very different experience. Tell us who inspired you to go into this field and why technology, why cyber? Well, although I love all the women on this lit on this slide, I guess the one woman who inter who influenced me the most was my mother. Uh, she graduated in 1984 from New Mexico State University with a degree in computer science. And while she was doing that, she would come home and we would do what she called hand execution, which really is just a code walkthrough these days, what we call it. And she'd walk me through the code and I would try to help her find syntax and logic errors because she had to schedule time to go to the computer lab uh, and she didn't want to waste time debugging code there. And so she has been my hero, my role model, and I've just tried to follow in her footsteps. And I can't say enough about her. She's, she's, she's something else. <laughs> I know your mother, I agree. She is something else. <laughs> <laughs> Marivi, how about you? What inspired you to go into this field? Um, actually, it's, um, for me, it's a life-changing event. Um, uh, back in early 80s, uh, got married young, and um, I knew I was going to be probably potentially be a single mom. So I said, what is the, the field that I can make a lot of money <laughs> and support <laughs> three kids at that time? And um, I went into tech. Um, my undergrad is actually bi 
arts and then I went back to school for computer science and and that's how I got into the field and you know work with a lot of men during that time and um, yeah supported my three kids and eventually um, met my husband in tech my second husband so now we're both in tech and 25 years married wow I can I've relate talked. to that story <laughs> yeah, hats off to you. It's not easy to get through school when you have a family. So good hats off. Yeah. Well, my mother helped me a lot too. So that's another, yeah. <laughs> Lisa, Gina, what about you? Yeah, for me, it was, um, it was very much like you. It was an accident. So I was in the food industry. Uh, my education is actually um, as, a, as an accountant. So, you know, coming from food industry, I wanted a change. And as I looked around and talked to people, I knew that technology would give me that change. So I made a complete switch, which was very scary, but at the same time, um, something that I wanted because it was going to be, you know, an, an opportunity to learn something new, but an opportunity to continue learning. So what I enjoy about the technology space is that it's ever changing, you know, the um, rules that we have out there today, the job opportunity was not there just five years ago and the roles we're going to have in the next five years will be brand new. And so it's it's a great opportunity to continue to learn. It has the highest earning potential as well. So I agree there. Um, and it just allows you to stay sharp, right, to continue to use your skill set and be a valuable asset. Oh, I agree. Gina, you want to add on? Absolutely. Um, I coincidentally got my interest peaked early on. My father was ex-military as an aerospace engineer for the United States Air Force um, with two girls. So he always wanted boys. He made no secret about it. So um, he kind of got us recognizing that the industry was going to be super competitive. I appreciate because that kind of leveled the playing field, encouraging uh, my sister and I to get our education and understanding it. And then he really took it to the next level and bought me my first, um, used to be called Tandy. I'm dating myself, but back in 1987, it was a Radio Shack laptop. And that's what piqued my interest. I started toying around with programming. And of course, Atari gaming was big in the 80s. And um, it's led to led me to where we, we are today and, and have just been so empowered with the growth of not only in IT, but also the opportunity for women as a whole. Oh, that's great. Now, I, I will say my experience joining in, I was working as a receptionist actually for a, a retail company and we got our very first company PC back in the day. Uh, it was not like too early on. We did have at least Windows 3.1 by crying out loud. But uh, that was my instruction, learn this PC and figure out what this thing does. And so, you know, you, you move the brother word processor off your desk and you get something and you start learning something new. And, uh, you know, throughout my career, it was you know, what's going to help me stay into this profession and what's going to allow me the most growth and allow me at that point, I was uh, a single mother with a mortgage and trying to find how am I going to be the most sturdy, the most stable in my profession, in my career. Uh, to support my family and it was it was very much a similar story as a couple of you so certainly been a fantastic accident if you will for me if we want to move on to talking about being a woman in a male-dominated field this is certainly uh something that's pretty relevant to us all uh we've as we've been preparing for the session we've had a number of chances to talk to one another and share the experiences of how we dealt with male colleagues who were either trying to kind of own our narrative or take credits for our ideas or what have you. Do any of you have a personal story you'd like to share? Uh, maybe it would help our audience feel more comfortable knowing they're not alone in the experiences that they have. Or if you're more comfortable, maybe we can skip to how do you handle it, parts of your stories or how do you hold your own? Sure, when it, Nancy want me to start or? That would be great. Sure, Marivi. Yep, thank you. So yeah, so like I said, I, I did, um, this is my second uh, education is really going back to uh, a STEM, you know, field. I think uh, quite a bit of women have this concept of, at least when I was starting, I, I thought I have this imposter syndrome that, that I would say, like, because obviously you go into your class and 
you're probably one of you know you can count how many women are in there during that time at least in in the late 80s but um i think that imposter syndrome is one that i thought i have to have the confidence to you know not think about it i i'm here not my skills and and the things that i learned out of a stem is true because of the skills that i have it's not just because i i chose to do it but i really want to excel in it so i think that imposter syndrome what most women would feel going into a stem degree is one that we need to overcome and then as you overcome it then you actually you know um mentor other women or your colleagues in the workplace um i think uh rain is also you know help others you know to really you know be successful with it because that that is some you know personal thing that i always say every single day i'm gonna try you know my women colleague to help them because that small app you know could have a big impact to their career so yeah that imposter syndrome we got to get out of it <laughs> but that's how i when i first started getting into to a stem degree well that's great Maria, I see you've had some comments you'd like to add. Yeah, I, the create a safe space uh, really strikes me because uh, my mom, as I was saying earlier, you know, she back in the 80s, she was getting into this field and there were no women's networks. There were no resources. So she and her, I think, two or three other female students were banded together. Uh, Loretta, I think, was one of them that she worked. I remember her mentioning uh, Loretta quite a bit, very encouraging, trying to help her, you know, stay positive work through those imposter syndrome type of things. And then later on when she got into the actual field, she you know, would create the good old girls network. <laughs> and so I thought that was my first time I've ever heard, you know, good old, some sort of networking and they would band together as well. So I think we naturally kind of join together and, and try to help one another out. And I wanna make sure that, you know, we keep, we keep paying that forward and doing that, uh, you know, creating those safe spaces. I agree. Safe spaces are critical in everything that I've ever, all the different companies that I've worked for, having that opportunity to be able to voice the struggles that you're having or, or get feedback from other women who have experienced those same issues and, and be able to learn from them and, and carry that forward into your own career and in helping others as you go, that's just invaluable. Another thing she did, she was telling me here recently is that when she would walk into a room she would they would men would just completely discount her and not even acknowledge her physical presence in the room and even sometimes when she would speak they would just completely ignore her so in somewhat of a dark and twisty sort of way we've made progress because at least we're saying you know avoid saying phrases like dumb it down you know things like that stop apologizing so at least we're, we're speaking more i just you know i want us to kind of own the room um and, and help each other yeah, sadly, I've experienced even that within the last five years, even, you know, where I've had male colleagues who would, I would say a statement and it would fall on deaf ears. And then my male colleague would literally parrot the exact same statement that I made and be thought of as the hero of the room. So we, we are glad to hear we are coming a ways, but we still have a long ways to go to be certain. Lisa, Gina, anything you'd like to add? Yeah, I'd like to add something. So as, as I continue to you know, stay in the tech space and see the change really over the last 17 and a half years that I've been in the industry is um, some of the things I've done to tackle that is really speak out to what I am looking for and what I would like to have. So some of the unconscious bias that's out there, it's not intended and it just kind of happens. And some of the things I've seen is you know, maybe uh, maybe you don't get invited to the happy hour or the golf event, but if you let people know what you want to do and the career path that you want to take, that allows people to just kind of stop and pause just for that second to think, oh, wait, maybe I should invite so-and-so because she's interested in this topic or she's interested in this um, position. So those are some of the ways that I've been able to really navigate throughout my sales career on the technology side as well, on the customer success side, and then today on the partnership side is really using my voice. And many of you talked about that is, you know, being honest with yourself. And a lot of what I'm also doing is getting rid of 
that um, imposter syndrome, knowing that if I want something, it's up to me to go out there and get it and to make sure people know about it as well so I can build this ally, um, these allies to support me along the way as well. That makes a lot of sense. What would you this, say? And it, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. I was just going to interject and just kind of echo Lisa's sentiments. I think one of the strongest things that we have whether women or men in the industry of IT is that it's a great land of opportunity, right? And if we recognize that we're, we, there may be an unconscious bias that we go in there with um, and dealing with, but don't be intimidated by it, right? We recognize all the skill sets that we bring to the table. And I think we as women will see that in a lot of cases, we not only meet, but excel in a lot of areas that maybe um, men don't really have specialties in. So. I like to embrace that opportunity to always recognize that there's opportunity all the way around. That's a great point. We've got a question here that's come in about don't be the weather girl, take and keep your own ideas. How would you, uh, Marie, would you like to expand on that a little bit? Yeah, sure. I, I read an article um, on the, I read avidly <laughs> and it was talking about being, don't be the weather girl. And it really struck me is because I, it, the scene it painted was you're in the elevator, the doors open and walks an executive, male executive, and you say, oh, hello, hi, how, you know, how's the weather? You start talking about the weather. You move down to another floor, doors open, a, a male coworker walks in and he reaches out, shakes his hand, shakes hands with the executive leader and says, hey, how's it going? Leader responds back, how's it going with you? And then the male coworker starts talking about projects he's on. Hey, I think this is going to this project we're working on looks like it's going to be a success. We're overcoming, overcoming some challenges. Don't be the weather girl. <laughs> that, was going, that was pretty good. So yeah, they take those opportunities to talk about the projects that you're working on. Um, don't be afraid to say, hey, here's what we're doing to overcome things. Show that you're a problem solver and stop talking about the weather. <laughs> yeah. Another question that's come in is, is if you've had a group mate take credit for the work that you've done. How do you handle that situation? What do you do to take your idea back? Do you want me to uh, get that? Yeah. Yes, I'm sorry, go ahead. So yeah, I, I, I think it's, um, I think the delivery shows, um, someone could speak to, you know, probably the work you've done, but then when it actually comes to really the facts and what the delivery, you know, results would be, nobody could speak better than how you did it, right? So uh, I, I think that that's really more, you, you could be quiet, you could be, you don't have to be the one who's always talking uh, in a meeting, but as you observe and you see other people taking credit for what you do, but then again, the actions really is going to show, right? The delivery is really what's important. In a sales organization, um, if you help, like I have engineering team, um, those engineers really are the IP of our organization and their delivery shows. So that one is really, it, it's a direct impact to the revenue on how they contribute to it. So I think there's metrics to show that. And whether women or men, it really still is, you know, your delivery. It's not what you talk about, but it's the actions. I agree. I've seen some scenarios in meetings that I've been in where uh, someone was trying to take credit or own credit for an idea that was just presented by another person. And to be something where as another leader, if I see it happening, if that person is not taking their own voice or using their own voice at that table where I have stepped up and said, thank you so much for agreeing with this other person's idea. Let's expand on that more and see what they might have had additional to add to that conversation. So I, I try as a leader to redirect the credit back to the person who offered that suggestion in a meeting. This is another idea of something that you might try. All right. Yeah, this is this is Marie. I also have just come out and said, hey, I'm glad you agree. When someone's kind of talked over me, I'll come mm -hmm. back with, I'm glad you agree, and then go on and take that conversation yeah. back myself. Yeah. All right. Well, let's move on a little bit and talk about accelerating your career. See if we can move those slides forward a little bit.
Lou. Okay. <laughs> um, I'll go again. <laughs> okay. Oh, here we go. Oh no, I see that it's moved now. So let me let me here, talk about yeah, this. Yeah, here we go. Second. So before, before we get too go deep ahead. into this, uh, I apologize. I did not see that we had already moved the slide. Uh, before we get into too deep into this, I do want to point out to anyone who's on the call or anyone who is maybe considering a cyber profession, especially in these crazy you know, COVID-19 times that we're living in, how cybersecurity really is future-proof. Uh, there's expected to be something like 3.5 million unfilled security jobs by 2021, and that number just keeps increasing. So anyone that's out there that's listening, if you have skills like analytical thinking, creative thinking, if you're good at collaboration, there is some kind of job in cyber for you. So you should look into that and really be that voice that shapes our future. So coming back to our panelists, if each of you, well, each of you have become outstanding leaders within your organization and in the industry as a whole. So if you wouldn't mind, please share with our leader, our listeners, the steps that you've taken to kind of accelerate your own career path and how others might be able to do the same. Yeah, Goodbye, um, so this is something that I am super excited about and, and something that I spend a lot of my time really helping others to do. But personally, um, one of the things that really helped me in accelerating my career is just raising my hand and saying yes to any challenge that came my way, or asking for a new challenge didn't happen overnight. I had to get really comfortable with the idea that failure is just a not another opportunity to learn. But I've, I've gotten comfortable in understanding that a new project, a new opportunity, a new task, a new challenge is my opportunity to sharpen my saw. It's my opportunity to add more value to my customers and partners and rackers around me. It's also my opportunity to accelerate in my career. Um, and the other thing that we should really look at is investing in ourselves. Too many times we are looking at other people doing certain things or maybe other people investing in other people, but it starts with you, right? And so once I really took control of my career, my, the investment that I wanted to make in me, that's really when I started seeing the acceleration and the change happen. Um, and so I would encourage all of you out there, if you're asking, how do I accelerate? Um, it starts with you, and and I go back to that imposter syndrome because too many times we tell ourselves we're not capable or we may not be successful. When we understand that, hey, failure is actually an opportunity to learn, it really knocks down that fear on on its um, on its back. And if you also treat yourself the way you would a friend, you start really talking in a different way, right? That inner voice starts really saying things like, oh, you messed up, but it's okay. Cause that's what you would say to a friend versus you messed up, you stink, don't try that again, right? You're not ever gonna tell a friend that. So when you really start putting those two things out of the way, you'll see yourself just naturally accelerate because you're investing in you and you're keeping your, and you're actually moving yourself forward versus holding yourself back. That's a great point. Marivy, it looks like you might want to pop in here too. Sure, yeah. I mean, I, I call it my, it's four E's. I explore early on and I engage and then try to excel and then celebrate my eminence. So I think um, I read an article quite a while back on Harvard Business Review that women tends to harness the power of experts and teams so like I was talking earlier, it, the success, my success is not just because of me. Uh, I'm successful because of my team. And that's where I explore. I'm resourceful on, you know, towards, you know, my journey in my career. It's not all about what I do, but what my team does. And then I celebrate as a team, our eminence. So, and we all take the risk together and then we all succeed together. And I, I think that's that's where um, I see that, you know, it, it's not Marivi, but it's especially in leadership, you know, uh, we do celebrate, especially with women, right? There's very few women in, in IT or in tech, um, but again, it, it's all men and women too, but again, it, it's, it's a team effort. So exploring early on, engaging everybody, and then excel together and then celebrate your eminence together. That's how um, 
I've always, you know, through my journey, my career and got to management. I was an engineer in the beginning, but I said, I can't be in the data center the whole day. I like to work with people. So, <laughs> so that's, that's, so I satisfied that. And um, yeah, very, very uh, excited, even, you know, with, with technology and on a lot of, you know, the projects we're doing for our customers. Fantastic. Marie? Hey, yeah, um, I want to expand upon the failure uh, that, you, that the other folks talked about. Yeah, don't be afraid to fail. I mean, if you look at historically, there's been a lot of failure around us. And honestly, we as women can't do any worse. So go for it. Uh, and you will learn and you will make people around you better off for it. So just trust in yourself for that. And then the other point was the networking piece. I don't know that we network. I read an article, another article talked about networking. And it gave me permission not to have to be a best friend with someone I reach out to, that we can actually mutually benefit from just being acquaintances or having an interest in the same topic. Uh, and that, for me, that kind of released me from, like I said, the BFF kind of thing, because I think women, we try to make sure we're taking care of everybody. And this is just one more thing I didn't have to take care of. And it actually freed me up. And I've actually made many more connections thinking about this this way. And, um, you know, invest in your network before you need it. Reach out to people. If you don't know something, find someone who does. You know, do the work, show up, ask questions you know, when, you, when you meet those people. This is great, great information. Some of the questions that are coming in to all of us, uh, is there, do you believe that you should have a specific STEM degree in order to get into cybersecurity? And if not, how would you look at breaking in? No, <laughs> no, Gina, you know, Gina, Gina, I'll give you that. Yeah. Gina. <laughs> sure, sure. Um, my background is not in STEM or IT at all. I actually have a BBA and an MBA. So back in the day when I went to college, business school was where it was at, right? But what I ironically have taken from that is that you can still branch into those fields because at the end of the day, IT is driven by threats, right, that come in, especially in cybersecurity. But what are they threatening? They're threatening monetary positions of companies. They're threatening identity theft of per people's credit reports, et cetera. So there's always going to be a facet of any degree that you come into that will relate to the IT industry. And I think that any education in any form, certification for your university, is going to be a wealth of knowledge in, in helping you to break into that IT world because it's, it's it's all part of our common day. I'd like to add on to that myself. I will tell you, I do not have a degree at all and have made it this far along in my career. I do have a lot of certifications, whether that be in an in internal audit, in data privacy, in various technologies. Uh, I have uh, certifications in project and program management. There's plenty just from my own skill set that I did not learn from my education. Honestly, if I had taken computer science back when I was going through, when I was college age, I should say, uh, I don't know how much of that would even be applicable to where I am in my career today. So the continuous learning, the uh, looking at more certifications and, and just keeping moving everything forward, keeping your knowledge fresh, I'd say is far more important to me than whether I see a degree on someone's resume. And this is where yeah. I'm gonna hop in. Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I was just thinking, and, and coming from a diverse background or a different perspective only enhances our ability to look at those different types of threats because you're coming at it from a different perspective. So I think that's a complete benefit. Yeah, don't let it hold you back from jumping in. Yeah, I think it's it's not necessarily what you learn from STEM degree is not what you really use as your experience. And I did learn a lot from having that unfortunate experience of, of being uh, being in a company that's been breached <laughs> mm. when I was that's at Sony. Education by itself. <laughs> So that that that's a big education, and that's where you really, you know, would apply moving forward. You know how you would do your analytical skills in cyber, how you would look for what threats and all that, because you you, you know, you experience it. I mean, that's the best way to. It, it's unfortunate way, but that's where you get a lot of the experience. 
are there any specific certifications that you all look for when you're hiring within your teams? For me, if, if it's pertaining to cyber most, um, you know, the certs would be more on maybe in a network, you know, engineering certification. Um, again, the first defense in, you know, in your perimeter is the network, right? So, so I think if you do have a knowledge of really that environment, you know, whether it's, um, well, again, it, I think any certification would would be good, right? Because that's that's where, like um, we said, even if you don't have a bachelor or grad school degree, you keep learning, and those certs are very valuable. Mm -hmm. no, I agree. I'll, I'll say from within the data assurance, data privacy perspective, I look a lot for people who have maybe a CISM or a CISA. Uh, CISSPs are also very helpful in my world. Uh, those are just a few that I, I'll toss out there just from a, a broad spectrum, but certainly the more that you can know, the better the, the better you look, the more you know. All right, let's move on. Inspiring the next generation. I'm sure we have all been to our fair share of career days at our kids' schools, but I'm wondering what else are we doing to inspire the next generation? And, why don't you tell me some of some of your favorite organizations that would inspire our youth? Yeah, for me, it's um, Girls Inc. So I'm located in San Antonio, Texas, and we have a, a local chapter here. But Girls Inc. is a nonprofit organization that um, supports young young girls to be strong, smart, and bold. And what we do there is giving them the opportunity to have a code camp or the opportunity to to do a speed mentor session with some of the local female leaders here in San Antonio. Many of them actually uh, female leaders from Rackspace that participate. But those are some of the things that if we get to these young girls early and show them how fun technology can be, and also something very key that technology doesn't mean you only code or you only work on network. There's so many other opportunities within the technology um, industry that isn't necessarily coding or working on the network that they can still be part of. And so um, I, m my personal opinion is if you get to these young girls early and you show them the possibility that technology brings, everything that we love, right, the ability to continue to learn, the high earning potential to support themselves and family, and, um, and the excitement of the ever-changing field, I think getting that excitement ingrained early allows them to really select the career path that they want to take and many of us we we got lucky and we landed in here but envision the next generation of female leaders and how they actually raised their hand and said i am going to be here right i'm going to work in the tech industry and i'm going to be a female leader there so that excites me um, and girls inc is is one of the ways that i support that fantastic yeah, so I'm um, an active member of what we call here in uh, S Southern California, it's STEM Advantage. It's where we actually sponsor um, underprivileged um, uh, kids that are not able to afford to go uh, to a STEM uh, curriculum. So um, that that's where I'm active in. Uh, also, a lot of higher ed organization a uh, member of UCLA IS Associates. I learned that early on because um, actually Deloitte, when I was there, we actively, we have a recruiting um, office actually in the major uh, university here in SoCal and everywhere actually in each, I'm, I'm part of the LA-based Deloitte uh, team before. And so we do recruit directly from you know UCLA, USC and other um, UC systems. Um, so encourage, you know, um, not only women, but really more, you know, the generation that you, you could potentially, you know, mentor them and really help them through their career. And um, then, then there's the executive women in IT where we actually teach um, kind of mentor, you know, directors and upcoming, um, you know, C-level, potential C-level executives. 
um, in the industry. That sounds terrific. I know I've done some work with the Girl Scouts. Uh, both of my daughters were Girl Scouts along the way. I know that they now have some great uh, cyber education, cyber patches that girls can earn. I know that they are doing a lot to expand their program there. Marie, how about you? What are your thoughts? Yeah, back in the day when my, my, my daughter was younger, uh, I was a Girl Scout leader and yeah, those patches, those try it patches for technology were awesome. Um, I remember doing an example of a network. We got a bunch of PVC pipe and a bunch of ping pong balls and we put um, letters on each ball and we had message headers and information on the ball. And we had one group start sending the ping pongs through the network, the PVC pipe, and the other girls on the other side would have to reassemble the message. So that's where we kind of taught them what you know, the internet or networking was. And these days, I really focus on mentoring and working with women who are trying to make a career switch, trying to help them make sure they're getting you know, skill sets or search they need, trying to facilitate introductions with folks in their respective areas of interest. I think there's a lot of people who are trying to make that industry switch who can use some assistance, and that's where my focus is today. Oh, that's I also add to that that um, I think the career switch is all great and also some women that had left the industry become a full-time you know mother and wanting to go back um, I, I think that is a great way to really help you know I, I you know I have four kids and luckily I have my mother to help me but you know women typically would sacrifice their career and then when the kids are, are grown they go back right so that's something that i think more uh, organization that would be able to help with that would be really good so we've gone ahead and moved our slides forward into inspiring those professionals so what recommendations would you have for someone who wants to join the field or or wants to circle back in their career for another go I'll take this one off or this first dab at it. Um, again, back to networking, reaching out to folks, uh, trying to you know get people to facilitate introductions, doing the work, learning, reading books, listening to podcasts, uh, going to meetups. There are a plethora of technical meetups out there where you can just even now virtually show up and talk through topics. Uh, attend a couple of them, you know, see what you can learn, meet some people, you know, that kind of thing. Great. One of the questions that just came in is most of the programs they've seen are for young women under the age of 35 who are doing a career switch, but what recommendations do you have for second career women? I'd say do the same thing. I've, I've hired within my own intern programs women who have spent 20, 25 years in their first profession and have come back, gone to school, done some education to get into the cyber field and brought them on as an intern. Now they were, you know, the rest of the interns in the program might have been in that younger category, but she was incredible and has still just catapulted into her career, uh, both through networking, through getting involved in various programs. I know she's an active Toastmaster. She's, she does a lot of different things to kind of get in, get in with those networks and move her career forward. And she's now, I think, three or four years deep into her new cyber career, and this is just doing great. So. I would say just because groups are maybe pitched towards younger generations or, or younger groups of women, that that's not any reason that you should feel limited. And I would suggest just jump right in and go. Yeah, I think the age really, it's more really what your skills are. If you, in cyber, it's, uh, I feel that, you know, the older you are, you have you gain a lot more analytical skills because you've mm -hmm. been through quite a bit and experience a lot. And that's where, you know, especially in cybersecurity, um, I, I'm not the CISO here at Technologian, but I partner with our CISO really well. Uh, obviously, you know, it, it's really also making sure you have ex a sponsor that will help you. Uh, I think regardless of age, it's the sponsorship, it's the community. You know, it's the networking and, you know, your experience in life would really help as well. Mm -hmm. I think in terms of finding some of those sponsors, some of the organizations that we have on the screen here, I know ISSA, at least in North Texas, has a women in security special interest group that does a lot to kind of match mentors with 
with people who are looking for mentors. Uh, I've done some work with women in security as well. There's just all kinds of opportunities within these organizations for women to expand their networks, find those mentors, find people who would champion them in different areas of their career. Gina, I see and your I, Yes, if I could echo that sentiment, I'm, I'm super excited with Rackspace and their recent uh, choice. We, our CISO is a female, Karen O'Reilly Smith. She brings a magnitude of experience to us in all industries and vectors of cybersecurity and compliance, et cetera. Um, but it has been so empowering to see her not only be the example of what, what we would all one day um, aspire to just kind of have that confidence in, in a what may be stereotypical a male dominated world, she's been able to go in there and kind of, you know, crack that glass ceiling, if you will, with that high heel and just make a difference to where men and women alike just respect her position. And I think it's a great opportunity, like was mentioned here in the forum of having professionals um, that we can have as mentors, that we can look up to, because every voice matters at the end of the day, and it, it, we can gather inspiration from everyone. Yeah, that's so true, so true. I, I will say we've uh, had a lot of questions come in about you know, how to get started in cybersecurity, you know, what certifications do you need to get? Uh, we did a seminar or a webinar last year that focused really heavily on this subject, and it's very easily accessible and on demand at our website. So if you go to armor.com slash resources, uh, there's additional information on certifications and groups that you can get involved with uh, as well. So take a look there. Okay, let's think about things going on within your company. So resources in, within your company. So I have worked with a lot of different companies that have resource groups for women uh, and programs that allow women and different people to explore roles within their organization. So within my own experience, in the companies that I've worked for, I'm, I'm losing my train of thought here. One thing that we have done in one of the companies that I worked for is something called the Day in the Life program that allows people to shadow someone within a different role for a day and learn more about both the company operations, the ins and outs of that role, and kind of encourage people to look at different potential growth opportunities for their career. Uh, and then women resource groups, I know within Armour Women's Network, I do a lot to kind of coordinate events and, and coordinate content just so that we can constantly be learning, constantly be building our network, building our community, and building that safe space within our organization. I know, Lisa, you've got some experience in those areas as well. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah, absolutely. So at Rackspace, our um, women's employee resource group is called POWER, and it stands for Professional Organization for Women's Empowerment at Rackspace. I'm the executive sponsor, and I get the pleasure of really working with a strong board on this mission of, of ensuring that Rackspace is a place for women to want to go to within the technology industry and a place for us to really thrive and grow. Um, and some of the things that we're doing to really support that is we've launched what we call a global mentor circles. Rackspace is a global company. And so we've taken that and we've created these circles over Zoom. So you have a, a, a US racker working with maybe a racker in our EMEA office. You have these mentor circles going on. And the topics are really around women's development. How do you support one another? How do you, and one of the big ones is like, how do you continue to drive and thrive with your network when you're working from home? So what are some of the activities that, that you can do to still stay connected to make sure that your eyes and ears are open for that next opportunity? Um, we also have other programs within the within power to really support women in their next career move um this morning we had a special guest for one of our power events he uh, lorenzo gomez he's actually the ceo of um, geekdom here in san antonio texas and he's the author of the cilantro diaries that talks about building your board of directors so this morning's session was all about supporting our rackers on what is the board of director who should be on your board of directors and how do you keep that board of directors strong so that your network is strong and you're finding these opportunities for you? That sounds wonderful. Marie, do you have anything like that at Technologist? Yes, yeah, so um, actually our uh, 
our chief marketing officer, Heather Gonzalez, she, she heads that up. And uh, every year we have a national sales meeting and we actually have a technology and women in technology. And, um, and again, it's, we're not a big corporation. We're under 300 employees. So um, uh, luckily in technology, and it's, I think it's 50% women. <laughs> so, wow. so it's, Good track, I believe. I, I'm, you know, I, I could be wrong, but I, I know it's quite a bit. Uh, even if it, we have a lot of engineers, but, you know, it's, it's very diversified. So I, I think, um, but again, we participate also on a lot of our OEM uh, partners on their women. Um, in technology movement, like I would speak for, uh, like during Cisco Women in Tech, uh, during the International Week for Women. So yeah. Love doing those. <laughs> Speaking of all, that's great. Well, we do have some tips to get started. If any of you are in an organization where you maybe don't have a women's group or any kind of resource groups within your company, these are great ways to get started. Some good ideas. I want to make sure we have plenty of time at the end for questions. This, ladies, this has been fantastic information. I just want to thank you all for sharing these experiences with us. Uh, at this time, I do want to transition into our question and answer portion of the webinar. If you have not already submitted your questions, please feel free to use the question function to send them our way. While you're submitting questions, I do want to ask all attendees to participate in the quick survey that will be sent out after the broadcast, where you can provide us with your feedback. Also, if you think about a question once the broadcast is closed, you can submit those questions in a post-broadcast survey as you rate our webinar for the day. And of course, if you'd like to attend other upcoming events, sign up at armor.com slash events. That being said, let's jump right into our first question. Here's one. How do you deal with being ignored in a room full of older and more experienced people? Who'd like to take that? I'm happy to take that. So one of the things that I do is I focus on what my strength is. We all have it, right? Some of us are really great at presentations. Others are really great at influencing others or really understanding the technology space that we're in. So we're the expert there. Um, when I find myself in a room full of men that may be a bit older than me, more experienced, I really lean on the expertise that I have, um, the expertise that I have in my domain. And for me, it's around partnership and strategy and growing the technology business that I'm responsible for. So in doing that, I start speaking up and using the words that are going to catch their attention. So growth, scale, global, partnerships with X, Y, and Z. Um, and I do that so that I can capture the audience and really get them to pause and pivot over into, um, you know, pivot so that I have the opportunity to speak up. But so the advice I'd give with you there is get their attention, right? You, you probably know the words that will get them to turn and look your way. So take ownership of the expertise that you have and, and the fact that you belong at that table and get their attention by saying the words that matter in that meeting. Great answer. Here's another, what is the best way to go about getting an active cybersecurity mentor to help obtain more knowledge as a new cybersecurity graduate in the cybersecurity management and policy? The best way about going about getting a mentor. Hey, this is Marie. Uh, I'd say don't limit it to just one. Uh, get a couple, maybe even three uh, with different perspectives. That'll help you round out your experience and how you proceed forward. And then, you know, again, networking, meet, go to meetups things of that nature, put yourself out there, ask questions, things of that nature. Okay. I think also, um, I know it's, it's about cybersecurity, but depending on which industry or what um, enterprise you're working on, it would also be really good to learn, you know, what is the business um, core competency and that what you need to protect. So sometimes the mentor may not be within IT or within the cyber security team. Sometimes the mentor would be maybe the CFO or or the chief medical officer because then you know really is like, you know, what are you, what threats are you looking for, you know, to protect the business. So it's a combination of, you know, tech and also the business side that it would be good to help 
always see that what the business is looking for that you're supporting here's a question i think may fire up some of our panelists how do you handle it when you do say yes to the opportunity but a male colleague puts you down publicly and says you cannot handle the challenge well i go back to the delivery <laughs> You can say what you want, but if I prove and deliver the results. I would just right? I, I flat out say, I disagree and here's why, and then go do it. Yeah. I think no, sometimes you're silent. Also. Yeah, that's true too. Yeah. Sometimes you're yeah, your silence will speak for itself to Monty's point is that once the work is delivered, it silences a lot of people. And sometimes yep. um, we can get caught up with trying to uh, verbally kind of vocalize what our position is going to look like. But once the work is delivered, there's not much you can say. Facts are facts. Yeah. I always like to think, underestimate me. That'll be fun. <laughs> uh, given that women are already a minority in tech, how do you find that women's resource groups tend to prioritize minorities among them, such as women of color and LGBT women and non-binary people? Yeah, that's a good question. So um, for Rackspace, we actually have 14 employee resource groups so that we have a place for everybody to feel comfortable. Um, and so in you know, and that question there, it's you find a way to serve everyone. We're all unique. And because of that, we all have great talents that when you put together, create something really amazing. Um, so what, what we do at Rackspace is we focus on that. We focus on our minorities, um, our women of color. We focus on all, all the different groups. Again, we have 14 um, that I could probably share with the Armor Group and then have that sent out. But it, it's really the purpose there is how do you welcome everybody to feel comfortable in a place to share their thoughts, their ideas, their stories, and to support one another? And it's it's creating that environment and it's allowing a company, you know, your company to do that. But I would highlight that companies need volunteers, right? So where you see your passion, I would challenge you to raise your hand and say, hey, I'll take that. I want to take that RRG or ER, ERG, and at Rackspace we call them Racker Resource Groups. I want to take that and I want to lead, right? And again, it's an, it's an opportunity to go lead, to go create change and to be the first at it and also support one of these groups that you're passionate about. For me, it's women in tech and so that's why you find me with power. Yeah, I, I think I, I believe on like uh, the women, but it's also inclusion, right? inclusion in the workforce um so i think you know women gender you know gender color race you know i think that's important in any workforce and we do have a few more questions and i see that we're really getting close to running out of time uh i will come back to this there's several on here about podcasts that we've mentioned earlier are there any specific podcasts we'd recommend books that we'd recommend uh, I know we've got a slide on this coming up just past Q&A as well. Our top re resources that each of us really like, things that we would recommend uh, for anyone who is looking for those kinds of materials and, and want to learn more. This is different ways that each of us stay in tune with where we are within our industries, just different things that we like, different places that we go for resources. Hopefully that will be helpful to everyone. Yeah, there's a plethora of resources out there. I mean, I'm trying to curate them all. I find I don't have enough time, but, you know, podcasts are, are one of my go-tos. There are several security podcasts, business podcasts that are out there, uh, audio books from my friend, um, and then TED Talks. TED Talks have some really great um, speeches out there that can, you know, provide insight and give you strategies for moving forward. Let me also mention that this slide deck is available for down download in our resources section within the GoToWebinar panel here, and all the links that are provided here are clickable. And with that, I would really like to thank our audience for their participation today. And again, just a huge thank you to our panelists for sharing their time and experience with us today. Everybody stay safe out there. Thank you. Thank you. All right, thanks everyone. Thank you, thank you.